Joe, good to see you today. We're here at OGM. We're standing in front of uh, a Matsura Lumex machine, which is an additive and subtractive machine tool. Now, you've been with Matsura maybe a year and a half now. Could you tell us a little bit about your role at the company? Yeah, so I was brought into Matsura to focus on the Lumex machine. Um, I'd, I'd come from a sort of machining background with uh, some additive technology. And now this has got the subtractive included in it. That's a really interesting part because this is a machine that probably a lot of our viewers may not have uh, seen before and might know what the capabilities are. Uh, your technical expertise, tell, tell us what the difference is between this, and I know it sounds obvious with subtractive, but the difference between this and a straightforward additive machine. So we combine the powder bed laser sintering machine with a three axis milling machine. So what this allows you to do is, is produce a completely machined and additively built component in one machine. So we're removing operations out of a process really, whereas before you may have had to use an EDM machine after you'd layered a part up, you can now do everything here, is that what we're saying? Yeah, it's a one stop sort of solution. And does it matter what the materials are? This is a metallic machine, isn't it? This is all about metals. Can you print anything and machine anything? This, this machine is purely based on metal powders. Um, we do now have a printer that will print in plastic. It's going to be introduced at Mac this year, so we're going to be selling HP printers. Okay, we'll come we'll come back to that in a minute. But on on this side of things, on the on the metal side, uh, what what metals can you do? I mean, is there is there no end to what you can actually print? Um, at the moment, we've got a list of materials that we've tested and we've proved. Um, the the potential's there to to start testing your own materials. But what we use at the minute is uh, margin steel, which is sort of your standard tool steel, probably similar to P20 tool steel. So that's what we use for the mold tooling. Uh, we do two types of stainless, uh, 316 and 630. We do titanium, in canal, and cobalt chrome. So the idea is, the idea is you can print all these and then you can come back your secondary operation, do the milling. What's the capabilities on the milling side of this machine? Is it, is it a fast machine? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fast. The problem is you're doing it in sort of steps, so it is slower than conventional, but then you can do things with this that you wouldn't be able to do conventionally. And what's, what size, how many tools does it carry, and what's the, is there any limitations in that area? So you can take, the tool carousel holds 20 tools. One of those tools has to be a top surface machining tool. So we have that in the carousel, so where other powder bed machines have a problem, where if the recoder comes across, detects a high spot, then basically the build has to stop. There's no way of them removing that high spot unless they went in and manually tried to machine it away with either angle grinder or chisel or something like that. So what we have is on tool 20 in the tool station, we set up a tool which is purely for machining the top surface. So we can either use it to machine high spots away and carry on building, or we can actually choose to use intra-layer intra machining, which allows us to machine it every 10 layers, so we can guarantee that we're building off a flat surface every 10 layers which then you get a nice straight build. Where other powder beds have a problem where warping or sort of wandering of a part, we can control that. You've hit about three or four benefits all at once there. That's, that's quite incredible, the differences that having the subtractive can make to a machine like this. The first thing that's coming into my mind now is things like uh, channels in, in, in parts and cavities and things like that. You can actually now build these up and then machine them to get that better surface finish, that better quality for through flow and things like that? Yeah, so we've, we've done some uh, test or projects with the MTC, uh, specifically on machining channels. So where typically a part would be made with linear holes drilled into it, then maybe plugged. We've managed to do like a six into one sort of um, completely machined enclosed part. And that would be much stronger as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, so it's stronger. So you can get exactly the same strength or you could even make it stronger plus the weight reduction. The weight reduction was the major sort of, uh, well, another major key to the part. It was like 90% weight reduction, which is huge benefit for the aerospace type companies. How about the control on this machine? How do you go about programming? The, you know, you talk about building up layers and then print uh, and then machining. How's that, how does that side of things work? Yeah, so a lot of the, pro well, all of the program is done offline. So we have our own CAD CAM system. The CAD system's built on the back of SolidWorks with our own add-ons. And that's just purely for ori orientating the part, sort of how you want to build it, adding supports if you need to. And then we post it into our CAM system. Our CAM system is a, is a system that's designed to combine both the additive and the subtractive in one. Makes it pretty easy. I mean, it's, the idea is it's user-friendly. 
you don't have to have much experience in either machining or or additive. You could have, you know, experience in additive, or you could have experience in machining, and you can apply the two in one cam system. And, and Matsura have been in this game for a long time. 1998, I believe, was the yeah. first Lumex machine. What generation are you on now? So we're on generation five now. So yeah, it's been it's been 20 years in the making. It's, so it's fair to say you've got a lot of experience and expertise. Is there anyone else that can compete at that level with this type of machine, or are you out there on your own? Yeah, I mean, there's a machine similar to ours, but I don't think it's at our level. It's sort of our machining knowledge is key. I mean, we've got, you know, we've been doing machining since 1930, so it's a long time. And would you would you attribute the same quality of build to this machine that you would one of your normal Matsura, you know, the hand-built five-axis machines and so forth? Are, are we coming at the same? Are we on parity with that? Yeah, exactly the same sort of manufacturing way. It's, it's the Matsura sort of way, and it's the same with the Lumax. It's it's sort of handcrafted quality machines, premium machine. And often one of the problems for maybe a toolmaker, for example, is if they printed a part uh, and they were looking at location points, they'd have to take that off the machine and machine it somewhere else, wouldn't they? But you don't have to do that here. You can do all that in one hit as well. That, that's quite a key advantage. Yeah, it's a big benefit. I think the, the problem across a lot of additive is locating the part afterwards. I mean, you, you'd be lucky to get it within a reasonable tolerance. With this machine, what we can do, we can either machine the full component or we can machine location points, so then you can place it on a machine afterwards, say a machining centre, pick up probe up a location point, and then it's, it's, it's accurate to that, that point, and then you can carry on machining from there. Often when we talk about additive machining, uh, specifically on its own, people talk about how, how long the process is to make a part and they could machine it quicker. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Because unmanned running comes into it, doesn't it? How do you feel about, or how would you answer that question about it being a slower process? I mean, for the mould tool making, it's, it's definitely not a slower process. It's, we've proven it's a quicker process. From design stage to actually manufacturing the part and having parts injection moulded is a really short time scale. I mean, the time you, you think this is 24 hours on man running, whereas generally a tool maker will probably operate the machine for eight hours a day. And I think what I take from conversations like with yourself, uh, Joe, is that this is all about a different way of thinking. It's a different way of engineering, which is obviously what OGM have embraced here, isn't it? It's about doing things differently. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're not trying to replace CNC machines. I mean, if you can make something on a CNC machine pretty quickly, then there's no point in trying to run it on an additive machine. What we're doing here is applying another sort of option, really. And especially for mold tool making, it's, it's been really successful because we can bring the lead time down by a, a good considerable amount. And when we t I asked you the question about whether it's um, a slower way of making parts, but you, which you, you counter-argued quite successfully, what about the cost overall? Okay, maybe it might be quicker, but what about the cost of buying the powder as opposed to uh, the, the, you know, a, a billet of material or whatever? It, it, you know, people do often say that the powder is expensive. The powder is expensive, but powder is powder manufacturers coming out you know developing powders all the time so the, the, the price of powder will go down but what you've got to take into account is the, is the fact the amount of material lost during a machining from a billet whereas this you're recycling the powder so you're only using what you actually build and then what about uh, one thing that's just sprung to my mind is about the heat and, and the cooling of the material I mean we all know that that parts grow hotter or whether they're hotter or colder uh, they grow or shrink so how do you handle that here on this type of machine once a part's made so what we can do is if we know there's going to be shrinkage of a part because yeah it gets really hot in the process what we can do is scale the part up it depends a lot on geometry but um, what we can do or what we're doing a lot now is telling customers rather than cutting their their, their mold tool from the base plate include the, the, the base plate as part of the mold tool then that re relieves the sort of the stress, if you like, of taking it off the base plate and the part flexing afterwards. What's coming across here as well is your experience, and I think this is a big part for Matsura. Your introduction into the company is that you realise quite evidently that you can't sell a piece of kit like this without supporting it well. Are you on hand, uh, is your role five days a week, additive manufacturing, that's it, Lumex machines and, and your new plastic machines that you're now uh, bringing into the range, is that your sole role here, Joe? Yeah, that's, that's exactly 
the only reason I'm here. So basically engineers, if they're looking at this, they know that they can have their hand held throughout a purchase. Yeah. They can be supported because you're not just selling a machine out of a box. Yeah. You're engineers to, to create that solution and that ongoing support. Yeah, we knew with this, with this, with this technology, it was going to be new, and it was new, it was new to a lot of our customers. You know, they, it, it, they're not like OGM, for instance. They're coming from a background where they, they haven't had any experience in in 3D printing, uh, with hybrid. So, we knew with this sort of technology that we're going to have to sort of start people off, helping them, you know, get to a stage where they were manufacturing parts and they were happy, and we could leave them to it. And from talking to Marcel today, he wouldn't have actually bought this machine unless he knew he'd got a company like Matsura behind him supporting it uh, from day one through till now. A Mac 2018 just around the corner. You, Matsura are going to be there in a big way, obviously, on the machining side, but also you've got an additive stand there in the additive zone. Uh, what will you be showing, metals and plastics there? Yeah, both. So we'll be showcasing our Generation 5 machine. So that's the, the Lumax Avance 25. And we'll also be showcasing our new... Uh, plastic printer that we'll be selling which is the HP multi-jet fusion. Great so they need to get there to come and see you so Matsura will be Matsura at Mac in, on two cases on the machining side then also in the additive zone. Uh, thank you very much for your time today Joe it's been a great insight into what is uh, got to be the latest uh, technology that we see at MTD. Thank you.